Hi, everyone. I'm John Lynn, the founder of Hitmic, and I'm here with my colleague and a partner in crime, Colin Hung. Live and in person, <laughs> live and in person, which is great. Yeah, so we're here at the HIMSS 2021 conference, and you know it's wrapping up today is the last day of the exhibit hall. It's been quite a unique experience. Obviously, we have masks on. <laughs> There's been a lot of interesting challenges because of COVID and the Delta variant. But let's talk about the exhibit hall from a healthcare marketing perspective. What are some of your you know takes as far as things you didn't see, or maybe things you did see? Yeah, one of the biggest things that I didn't see this year versus other years is there were nobody really kind of like huckstering people into the booths. There wasn't the magic magicians or, you know, the people doing the, the spinning wheels. There really wasn't a lot of that, which was, I think, really great, really refreshing to see that. It was really more when you walked up, you just had some great conversations. The other thing is that the tchotchkes, barely any this year. And the ones that were here obviously were masks or hand sanitizer and things like that. So not really a lot of tchotchkes, which I'm sure the marketing people really appreciated not having to bring that stuff. So I'll take the opposite of you as far as I love the magicians and I love the entertainers. <laughs> so I, I don't I don't want the person that's annoying you to like come to the booth sure. and I, I don't like those people. But I'm okay with a little entertainment, you know, because I can often talk to someone as I do it and it's it's pretty entertaining. It's a nice break up to the you know, what can be somewhat of a grind of a day <laughs> that many so I kinda missed that part. But as far as the Chashkis, I mean, we've kind of already done it, so maybe we're biased there. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I did hear, so, you know, word on the street is there's always a second layer of tchotchke. So if you're not doing the first layer of tchotchkes, people often have the second layer of tchotchkes uh, that's stored in the background or whatever that you bring just for like the right CIO who comes or maybe a right press person that you're like, oh, I want to, you know, tell them thank you. So there are second level tchotchkes and those have been pretty good this year. So <laughs> I think that's interesting. And one insight I think for me as I looked at it was, how different the booths were. And I think some of it was because of COVID, they needed to be more self-sufficient. But I think we also saw where some of them went so simple. I know you and I saw this one that had these like, I'm not like sculpture trees, but we looked at it and we're like, but what does the company even do? So there was a lesson there. It's like, okay, it caught our attention. We thought it was interesting, but if you're not communicating what your company actually does, uh, that doesn't really help. Yeah, I think the, the booths this year were, were subdued. I think that's the right word. There weren't that many fancy booths. Usually we walk around trying to look for the fancy booths. There weren't that many this year. There was one that stood out for me, which was the uh, Komodo booth, which was really, really cool with a LED, giant LED boards and things like that. That stood out. But for the rest of it, it was pretty run-of-the-mill booths, which I think was, again, I think was okay, and it kind of reflected the time we're in. Uh, you know, speaking to a lot of the people who were on the floor and in the booths, they were saying, yeah, definitely traffic was down, nowhere near what it was normally. But the conversations they did have were high quality. And that's a comment I got over and over again. They're saying, yep, down in terms of the numbers, but way higher in terms of quality of conversations because the people who are here really wanted to be here. And when they walked into a booth, they really wanted to talk to that vendor. So I think it's kind of a, a nice balance. I think I've heard from people who've come to HIMSS for years, they're saying this is like a throwback to about 15 years ago of what HIMSS was like. So I think it turned out pretty good. And I won't say it's a, you know, it's a rip roaring success, but I think for those that were here, they got value from being here. I think the other thing that's cool about it is that because we were able to hold it, then that portends well for next year that, yeah, hey, we were able to execute it in the mid of, midst of what might be the worst COVID spike in, in a while, and yet we still were able to hold it and a lot of people were able to meet. So I think that was really good. Plus, I think there's something really great this year. There was a lot of benches. <laughs> and so that, you know, I, I think that was one of those amazing benefits. There's places to sit down. When you got your food, you're like looking around in the past, where do I sit? And there was just nowhere. Sometimes you'd go, you know, hijack someone's chair in the booth. And you're like, hey, what? they're like, why are you here? And they see you eating. They're, they're generous usually. But to this year, there was a, always a place that you could sit down. You know, whether you were eating or whether you just needed to check some email or whether you were with someone and you just needed somewhere to network and connect that was really nice because there were a few times I'd sit on the bench and have a conversation and it made it a, a nice uh, environment to be able to talk to people 
Yeah, no, that was really nice to have those park benches and the, the nice seating areas. I hope that's something that we can continue for next hymns because yes, you're totally right. It was a fantastic place to network with somebody. Or if you met someone at a booth, instead of just tying up the booth area, you could walk over across the way and sit down and have a nice conversation. It was really nice. And of course they had hand sanitizer everywhere to keep everyone safe. <laughs> Yeah, there was one other area that I found really interesting, and that was the interoperability showcase. I have to admit, it did feel like I was almost like walking into a movie because there were different stages and different demonstrations, and you'd hear this voice, but you wouldn't see anyone talking because they were often remote. And so you're like, wait a minute. So I, I think there may be some work on like knowing who's messaging and which one was because they have so many companies involved in the interrupt showcase that it was hard to know like, wait, okay, so who is demonstrating and what are they demonstrating? But it was pretty cool that someone could get in remotely and be able to share that, which actually is interoperability as well. <laughs> like literally you can do it from anywhere in the world and be able to do that type of interoperability demo and showing the exchange of information. So that was an interesting space that uh, illustrated possibly a view into the future. I mean, even the first keynote with Hal Wolf, they brought someone in from Israel, which I felt bad for him. It was like 3.30 a.m. for him, <laughs> but it worked seamlessly. And it, I mean, whether he was there or not, I think we got the same message. So maybe that's something to portend to the future that maybe they don't always have to be here in person. If, you know, the flight's too long or if it's unsafe for a patient, you know, that maybe the virtual is a good option. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. A lot of, the, some of the sessions were the same way where they had one person, uh, one of the panelists here, one of the two of the panelists remote. It's interesting to see that hybrid sort of playing out. And I wonder if, first of all, I think this year, you could tell people were more accepting of that. Whereas I think in the past, it would be kind of like, why is that person not here? Or, mm -hmm. It's a bit awkward. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see if this is going to be a trend for other conferences going forward because it, it'll be really unique. It also allow, would allow it to very easily translate onto digital, right? So you can have a simulcast between live and digital. So we'll see if that, that turns out to be something we, in the future. Yeah, and I worked with one vendor that streamed a session and I realized, oh, there may be a capability that marketing people need to build <laughs> to know how to stream it from their booth or wherever they're doing it so that they can share the information, which you know, you look at it and you're like, why haven't we always been doing this? Like, of course, you know, even when, you know, it was at the height with 50,000 people here, well, there's still another 50,000 that aren't here. So why wouldn't we want to stream the information so that those that aren't here could do it? And, and then you realize, oh, there are a lot of logistics. You got to get the right internet. You got to get the right sound because if you can't hear it, then you actually have a worse situation, which I think is a marketing lesson as well. But if you do it right and you stream it with the right technology and the right you know, equipment to be able to do it, well then not only can you reach those here, you can reach those at home virtually live, and then you also have an amazing marketing product of the content that's there that then of course, you know, hit McPrincipal number three or four, right? Is <laughs> repurpose your content. So I thought that was another lesson I learned. Yeah, the one thing I was surprised at, frankly, that wasn't here was there were no telepresence robots. I thought we would see some of those Toshiba ones or Panasonic. I know they make them, or Toyota, I think, even has one, where they, you know, they're sort of like a cylinder on wheels with the LED screen, and you could see who's on the other side. I thought we would see a few of those. I thought maybe you could even rent one and yeah, just yeah. go like, hey, like I'm going to pay and go tour the exhibit hall for a day using one of these robots. Didn't see a single one, and I thought they would be here. So I mean, that's a tip for maybe for someone for next year who wants yeah. to sponsor, but I would have thought there would be more of those. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting as an attendee having a bot going around. That, that, that's an that's a interesting hint for him. So it would be cool to, you know, have CIOs walking around as robots. But imagine a vendor in their booth and the CEO can't make it for whatever reason, risk for family or something. Well, imagine the CEO is walking around the booth and <laughs> there's well, a robot. There was one booth, and I, I think it was um, uh, ASCOM slash Avaya. That's uh -huh. it they had a booth where you could go in, film yourself on one side, and they projected you in 3D as a hologram on the other side. Mm. And so you can imagine, if you had that technology, your CEO or your product expert could be back in the home studio, and you could have one of these panels, and they could literally look like they're in the booth. It was amazing. So maybe we'll see some of that technology going forward. 
So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, this, we've been wrapping up here at HIMSS 2021. Hopefully these are some useful insights and perspectives from a healthcare marketing perspective. And if you have any insights or perspectives, please share, you know, what did you learn? What did you see? What are you gonna do going forward? Be sure to share it in the comments, also on social media with the hashtag HITMC. And be sure to check out more healthcare marketing information at HITMC.com. Thanks Colin.